Alrighty, welcome back. Let's get some more work in with these uh, field transformation rules. What we see here is that um, the statement reads, a parallel plate capacitor at rest in S0 and tilted at a 45 degree angle to the X0 axis, axis carries charge densities plus or minus sigma0 on the two plates. System S is moving to the right at speed V relative to S naught. A. Find the E naught. Find E naught the field in S naught. B. Find E the field in S. C. What angle do the plates make to the x-axis? And D. Is the field perpendicular to the plates in S? <laughs> All right. So what we know is the field transformation rules. EX bar goes to EX, EY transforms, EZ transforms, BX, BY, 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 and then BZ into this. Uh, so we have everything we need there. Let's go ahead and draw it out. So as stated, we have two uh, that are tilted at 45 degrees to the X axis. So we'll see what's going on there. And we're moving this way. So let's see what we need to do in order to tidy this up. All right, so in part A, what we see is that the parallel plate uh, has a, the parallel plates. The field is sigma naught over epsilon naught, and it points perpendicular to the positive plate. Okay, so we know it's coming out, and we'll see all this in the uh, next slide when we draw out the normal direction. However, we know that E naught here is equal to sigma naught over epsilon naught, and then we have 45 degrees resting. Um, so we're going to have to take into account signages, um, and then we know our trig functions, sine points in the y, x points in the negative direction, so hence the negative there. These are both root 2 over 2, uh, or if you don't rationalize 1 over root 2, so we factor that 1 over root 2 out, and we're left with this expression in the box. Pretty easy there. Part B, though, we need to use the transformation rules for x and y. Parallel is unchanged, so x not or x, uh, EX is equal to EX naught, so we're just equal to negative sigma naught over root 2 epsilon naught. Perpendicular is learns contracted, so we have to take into account the fact that we have EY is equal to gamma times EY minus VBZ zero, or excuse me, V times BZ, what we know that's equal to zero here, and that's equal to uh, gamma EY, which is equal to gamma sigma naught over root 2 epsilon naught. So the total field in E for, or excuse me, the total field E for in S is EX plus EY, which is these two summed together, which again, we can factor out a common ratio here and just be left with negative X squared plus gamma Y. So not too hard. Uh, let's go verify this with the graph real quick. Theta is resting on the X. Our field lines are pointing this way. so. Be careful. This is how we determine the fact that we were negative in the x direction, positive in the y. Other than that, we're pretty good to go everywhere else. Let's go ahead and move on and see what else needs to be done. All right, so then in part C here, we saw that before in problem uh, 1210 and noted that only one length contracted. So we saw that uh, with this, with like the mass problem, Tangent theta is equal to gamma tangent uh, theta naught, and therefore tangent theta is equal to gamma tangent theta naught, which was at 45 degrees. We know 45 degrees for tangent leads to one, so we know that tangent theta is equal to gamma. So if we want to know what angle it rests at with the Lorentz contraction, we see that theta is equal to the arc tangent of gamma. Not too bad. That's actually a pretty quick result. Um, and then in D. Let n be the unit vector, uh, yeah, the unit vector perpendicular to the plates in S. Evidently, from the diagram two, which we just saw on the last slide, n hat is equal to negative sine theta x hat plus cosine theta y hat. The angle phi between n and e is cosine of phi is equal to the dot product, where we're dividing e dot n with the magnitudes of n and e respectively. But of course, since n is a unit vector, its magnitude is one. So we're left with cosine phi is equal to e dot n hat over e.
let's take their dot products and we see that uh, the magnitude of E um, will have a factor that cancels with the common factor. We like that. Get two negatives multiplied by each other. Then we get a cosine times a gamma and the dot product. And then we're left with a uh, square root of one plus gamma squared. Pretty cool to see there. Now, if we force factor this cosine to get rid of that tan to get rid of this uh, gamma here, we see that we can put one under sine and put a cosine under sine, but that will reduce down a tangent. So we're equivalent here. Clever trick there. The reason why is because we saw that tangent theta equaled gamma up here. So if we plug that in, we get gamma gamma, which gives us two gamma over the square root of one plus gamma squared times cosine theta. That's pretty cool. That's a lot of good trickery and uh, manipulation there with the algebraic structures. All right. All right. So finally, then, what we want is what does theta uh, or cosine of theta represent? Well, we know that gamma is equal to tangent theta, which is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. And if we push through definitions, think uh, from the Pythagorean identity. Uh, for the sine, we get a 1 minus cosine squared theta over a cosine squared theta just for the uh, square root and square. Um, what this allows us to do is combine these two and simplify them down. And so with that being said, if we're trying to find what cosine is in terms of gamma, now we just get to play a game algebraically solving. Square both sides, and we're left with this expression. Add one over. Now we're left with 1 over cosine squared. Take the reciprocal. Find a square root. So all we did was solve for cosine with this definition, um, getting rid of all the sine and tangents and all that other stuff, and just put it in in terms of gamma. So what this tells you is that um, cosine of phi is equal to 2 gamma times the square root of 1 plus gamma. And then this was the cosine of theta term that we found in the last slide. And now we get to uh, make it adjust in terms of gamma. So our cosine of phi is actually 2 gamma over 1 plus gamma squared. So to be perpendicular, the dot product must be 0. And this result is not 0, so the field is not perpendicular to the plate in S. So we had to show via the gammas that this couldn't be 0. And uh, that was a pretty clever uh, run through of how to deal with perpendicular and dot products. But this way to manipulate the gammas from uh, what's supposed to be translated in one direction versus not in the other, that stuff is really cool and definitely a useful part of this. Uh, we got more challenging questions coming up, so we'll let this one live where it is. But good work, and uh, we'll see you at the next one.